Hello and welcome to New Centro TV. I am Judith TB. Here are some stories making rounds beyond the continent. We we'll start off with the U.S. elections, where former President Donald Trump has been confirmed safe following an apparent assassination attempt at his Florida golf course on Sunday afternoon, and a potential suspect is in custody, U.S. authorities have confirmed. The political temperature is on the rise, and the Secret, Secure, Secret Service is under scrutiny, with questions being asked as to how this could happen again. For New Central, Chief International Correspondent Afia Hagen has more. There is no political playbook for how to deal with two assassination attempts against a major party presidential candidate within weeks of an election. Yet that's where the rival campaigns now find themselves after what is now a second attempt to kill Republican nominee former President Donald Trump in the latest twist to a political season defying president and highlighting the nation's deep polarization. Twice within two months, America has narrowly avoided the tragedy of seeing a major political figure assassinated during an election season and the toxic forces that such an outrage could unleash in a country racked by visceral partisan divides. The fact that incidences happen at all speaks to the undercurrent of violence that is a constant shadow over American politics, one that is enhanced by the easy availability of firearms. Both nominees now address outdoor crowds from behind bulletproof screens. There will now be fresh fears that a tempestuous period running up to election day could take the country further down a dark road. In normal circumstances, an apparent assassination attempt against a presidential candidate might be expected to unleash a surge of sympathy that could translate into a political boost. But the latest near miss for Trump comes at a moment when the race with Harris is neck and neck, while both candidates are fighting over perhaps several hundred thousand movable votes in swing states, it's not clear how much room remains for changing perceptions about Trump, who is being a polarizing figure ever since his 2015 launch of his first national campaign. She, she didn't get any votes, but she got the nomination. Explain that one. The former president is all but certain to use the latest events to reinforce his baseless claim that he's a victim of persecution meant to keep him from power. But it's too early to say whether the second apparent assassination attempt will have greater political impact than the first. Ultimately, it's going to be up to voters to sort out this unpredictable and dangerous campaign season. For News Central, I'm Afia Hagen. Let's also tell you that, that the man suspected of an apparent assassination attempt targeting former U.S. President and 2024 Republican Party presidential can uh, candidate Donald Trump has been charged with federal gun crimes. The suspect, identified as Ryan Roth, uh, faces charges of possessing a firearm despite being a convicted felon and possessing a firearm with an obliterated serial number. Additional and more serious charges are possible as the investigation into the incident continues. In the meantime, U.S. President Joe Biden says the uh, Secret Service needs more personnel to perform its duties after a second apparent assassination attempt against Republican election candidate Donald Trump. While referring to Trump, Biden added that, quote, thank God the president's OK, end quote, following Sunday's incident at the former president's uh, golf course in Florida. Thank God the president's OK. I think we got a full report so far. We're down there tonight. But one thing I want to make clear, the service needs more help. And I think the Congress should respond to their needs if they, in fact, need more services. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I think we need some more persons. I think they may need, they may decide. For more on this, I'm joined by our chief international correspondent, Hafia Hagen. Hafia, many thanks for doing this with us again. Now, what is the latest on this uh, assassination attempt on former uh, President Donald Trump? 
Well, we do have uh, Ryan Rife, who is uh, the suspect in the case. He was in court earlier on today uh, on federal gun charges, as you mentioned. Uh, he was quite nonchalant in court, uh, seemed to be quite casual in his behavior. He did flee, we found out, after he was, he managed to flee the scene after that attempted shooting at Donald Trump. It's thought that he didn't actually manage to fire any bullets, but the Secret Service fired bullets at him. Uh, and Ryan Routh, Ryan Routh, excuse me, has is quite a character. You know, he was a Trump detractor, a real critic of Donald Trump on social media, uh, a staunch reporter of the Ukraine as well, uh, someone who is very, very anti-Russian uh, from North Car Carolina. That's where he was registered as an unaffiliated voter. And he has had brushes with the law in the past, uh, it was pulled over by police and allegedly putting his hand on a firearm before barricading himself uh, into a business as well. Lots coming out about this character, that he was members of Foreign Legion or wanted to be a member of the Foreign Legion for Ukraine. Taiwan has also been mentioned. He definitely has a history. And yes, it is well noted that he was very critical of Donald Trump on social media. Hmm. Now, Trump has blamed uh, his election rival, Kamala Harris, and U.S. Pre President Joe Biden after the second uh, attempt on him, saying that your rhetor rhetoric about him endangering democracy is to blame. What do you make of this allegation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Trump was on Fox News Digital this morning, uh, and he basically said that the gunman acted on the highly inflammatory language of the Democrats. He said... He believed the rhetoric of Biden and Harris, and he acted on it. Look, this is a critical time for Donald Trump. And so he's going to make sure that he does everything he can to ratchet up the votes. And the best way to do that is to continue down this road of polarization and division. And by blaming the Democrats and blaming their rhetoric, for this assassination attempt, that shores up his votes and it also whips up his vote. It whips up his supporters and that drives dollars into his campaign, which he really, really desperately needs. But he's also going down a dangerous road. After the first assassination attempt, Trump really made an effort to kind of calm the rhetoric, to say that we need to come together as a country or the United States did needed to come together as a country and calm things down. This time he seems to have gone in the opposite direction. Perhaps that playbook didn't work for him. So this playbook is the one that he's going for. Fuel the division, fuel the polarization in the United States. And that's what he's doing by blaming the Democratic rivals, by blaming his, his rival Kamala Harris and the current sitting president Joe Biden for this attack. Mm. And, and, and what more can you tell us about this particular suspect besides just the, the, the update on uh, the charges now being levied against him? Well, like I said, he is someone who was highly critical of Donald Trump on social media, had written a lot of things on Facebook, on X. Uh, he had a lot to do with foreign countries, tried to join foreign legions, a real supporter of the Ukraine as well. And that's where some of the pictures are coming out today when you see him at pro-Ukrainian rallies. He said that the Kremlin needed to be burned to the ground as well. Uh, he was an affordable house builder. You know, he worked in Hawaii building storage units and tiny houses for people. Now, his son spoke this weekend as well. And he said that he hoped that everything had just been blown out of proportion. And he also said it was not like his father to do anything crazy, much less violent, and described his father as loving, caring, and an honest, hardworking man. That's hmm. from Ryan Wright's son. Hmm. And, and, and once again, uh, the Secret Service is now under scrutiny with this second attempt. How would they respond to this incident? Yeah, the Secret Service, again, coming under fire. Now, after the first assassination attempt of Donald Trump, the director of the, C the Secret Service was forced to resign. Uh, it's thought that in this attempt, perhaps they did much better. There was uh, an ahead team, if you will, a team of people that were sort of a whole ahead of Donald Trump. He was on a golf course, remember, when this occurred. And there was a team of Secret Service agents that were ahead of him, uh, 
looking in the perimeter for things like this. And that's where they discovered the gunman. But the thing with Donald Trump is he doesn't get the same level of protection that, say, the president does because he's not a sitting president. Therefore, he goes to play golf at mar lago and he's, he's absolutely passionate about playing golf. Uh, he said he loves golf more than he loves money. So he's always there playing golf. And this particular uh, round of golf that he played was not on the schedule. It was something that was put in last minute. So the Secret Service protections were put in last minute as well. But when you have a sitting president playing golf, they perhaps go and play on a naval air base, a, a situation that can be secured completely by the Secret Service. So the question now becomes, should Donald Trump have the same protection after two assassination attempts as a sitting president? Can that be funded by the Secret Service? Are they up to scratch or are they underfunded? And that's why this keeps happening. But both sides, Republican and Democrats, are angry that we're in this situation again, that a runner in the election, someone who was it was a former president, can be in a situation where it's a second assassination attempt. So absolutely, the Secret Service do have questions to answer today. Mm. Oh, Afia, many thanks for doing this with this uh, with us and just doing justice to the story. Appreciate you for for this uh, your insight today. Afia Hagen is the chief international correspondent for New Central TV. We're going on a short break. When we come back, we have more stories beyond the continent. Stay right there. Thanks for staying tuned. The news continues in North America, where thousands of people attended the Cry of Independence ceremony, which marks the start of Independence Day celebrations in Mexico City's Emblemica uh, uh, Zucalo uh, Plaza. Now, President Andres Manuel López Obrigado, Obrado I beg your pardon, gave the traditional shout from the National Palace and rang the Doris uh, bell. Mexico won its independence from Spain in 1821, and September 16th has been the International Independence Day ever since. Primero, es festejar el inicio del movimiento independentista, pero también porque apoyamos al presidente, que es nuestro presidente, porque nosotros lo elegimos, Andrés Manuel López Obrador. Estoy sintiendo a México, estoy, estoy viendo lo que es y más que nada pues que Obrador es el que ya se va y me da mucho gusto que, que, que estamos aquí. Y hoy siento la misma felicidad nada más que pues ya con todo mundo quiere llorar y todo mundo lloramos, estamos muy chillones porque la verdad fue una persona que... We now head to South America, where we understand that the Bolivia president, Luis Arque, has accused former leader Evo Morales of plotting a coup by calling for demonstrations and roadblocks officially to protest few shortages. Morales, Bolivia's first indigenous president, was extremely popular until he tried to bypass the constitution and seek a fourth term in office in 2019. Morales has approved the launch of matches with his supporters in the ruling Movement Towards Socialism party to begin from Tuesday. Although opponents of the president and Morales are members of the same party and the movement must designate a single candidate for the August 2025 election. Arce said the demonstrations planned by Morales aimed to impose his candidacy by any means. Still in the region, Argentina's uh, President Javier Millet has uh, presented his 2025 budget to Congress with the libertarian promising to veto any law that threatened his strict goal to reduce the country's budget deficit to zero. Since taking office in December, the budget slashing Millet has applied a drastic austerity program in a bid to rein in chronic inflation and decades of government overspending. Congress was half empty with a number of opposition members skipping what they called a staged event. While the president has faced setbacks in some of his budgetary policies, he notched a victory last week when lawmakers upheld his veto of a bill to increase pensions. The deficit siempre fue consecuencia de pensar primero cuánto gastar y después ver cómo financiarlo. Nosotros vamos a hacerlo al revés. 
pensando primero cuánto tenemos que ahorrar para después ver cuánto podemos gastar. Por eso vetamos el proyecto de aumento del gasto público que sancionó este Congreso y por eso vetaremos todos los proyectos que atenten contra el equilibrio fiscal. O sea, no exageramos cuando decimos que hemos hecho el ajuste más grande de la historia de la humanidad. Let's now bring you updates on the war between Israel and Hamas. Israeli army strikes have uh, hit villages in southern Lebanon, triggering clouds of smoke and sparking a wildfire. Hezbollah, Hezbollah has uh, traded near daily fire with Israeli forces in support of uh, ally Hamas since the Palestinian militant group's October 7th attack triggered war in the Gaza Strip with repeated escalations during more than 11 months of the cross-border violence. Meanwhile, Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant had told visiting U.S. envoy Amos, Amos Hunchten on Monday that prospects were deeming for a hunt to nearly a year of fighting with Hamas ally Hezbollah in Lebanon. The Iran-backed Lebanese armed group has traded regular cross-border fire with Israeli forces since Hamas's October 7 attack uh, sparked war in the Gaza Strip with a campaign Hezbollah has said was in support of its Palestinian ally. While repeated rounds of talks mediated by the United States, Qatar and Egypt have sought a truce in Gaza, there have been no signs of progress in diplomacy aimed at halting the fighting between Hezbollah and Israel. The violence has killed hundreds of mostly fighters in Lebanon and dozens of civilians and soldiers on the Israeli side. Let's also tell you that Hamas chief Yahya, uh, Yahya uh, Sinwa says the Palestinian group has ample resources to sustain its fight against Israel with support from Iran-backed regional allies near, nearly a year into the Gaza war. Sinwa, who last month replaced slain Hamas leader Ismail Haniyeh, said in a letter to the group's uh, Yemen, Yemenis uh, allies that the group has prepared itself to fight a long battle of attrition. He threatened that Iran ally aligned groups in Gaza, but also elsewhere in the region, including Lebanon and Iraq, would break the will of Israel after more than 11 months of war. Still on war in the Middle East, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that Moscow welcomes any steps that are aimed at stopping the war in Gaza. He made this known after a meeting with his Egyptian counterpart, Ber, Ber al-Balati, in Moscow. Now, Egypt is among a troll of countries mediating talks aimed at securing a truce in Gaza alongside the United States and Qatar. Egypt, with Мы приветствуем любые шаги, которые нацелены на то, чтобы как можно скорее прекратить кровопролитие, обеспечить устойчивое и постоянное прекращение огня. И мы того же добиваемся в Совете Безопасности ООН, действуем параллельно с нашими египетскими друзьями. Away from that to some disaster-related stories. Multiple fires broke out over the weekend in the Aviero region, including 12 firefighters with two in serious condition. Around 70 local residents have been forced to flee, according to the Civil Protection Authority. Local authorities also say that Portugal has received pledges of support from its European partners as it battles these northern forest fires. EU Chief Ursula von der Leyen on X formally Twitter confirms that four states were already responding after Portugal called on European countries to send reinforcements. The National Civil Protection Commander, Andrea Fernandes, says the situation is not out of control, but is very complex. In the eastern German city of Draden, the water levels of the Albi continue to rise due to heavy rain in the neighboring, neighboring countries of the Czech Republic and Poland. After a bridge partially collapsed last week, residents of the city fear this could lead 
to further damage. Wollen wir hoffen, dass es diesen Stand behält und nicht noch eine weitere Katastrophe nach der Brücke auslöst. Genau. Die Dresdner sind traumatisiert, was diese Brücke betrifft. Das Hochwasser ist, ja, ich möchte bald sagen, Gott gegeben, aber <lacht> wir müssen das abwarten und es sind auch Maßnahmen für die Abdämmung der Innenstadt vorgesehen und werden jetzt auch in diesen Stunden äh, getroffen und verwirklicht. Also, And now to Asia, where the strongest typhoon to hit Shanghai since 1949, Typhoon Bibinka, uh, made landfall on Monday, leaving a trail of destruction and disruption in its wake. Parking winds of 151 km per hour near its center, the typhoon knocked out power to many households, uprooted and damaged over 10,000 trees and injured at least one person. According to state media, over 60,000 emergency responders and firefighters were, one hand, uh, uh, were on hand to lend aid in Shanghai, while more than 414,000 people were evacuated ahead of the storm, with schools closed and people advised to stay indoors. As the typhoon moved inland, it dosed parts of Jiangsu, Anhu and Xinjiang uh, provinces, causing further damage. 其实今天的话天天跟雨风打交道的，所以我今天八到四岁也出来跑跑看看。那现在看的话，感觉可能还好，嗯，就是目前不是这一块不是很严重，但是不知道今天晚上或者是明天会怎么样。And that's all the stories we can take beyond the continent. Remember that you can send us your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number now showing on the screen. And do make sure to follow us on social media, will you? We are at New Central TV. You can also watch New Central live on DSTV channel 422 or on Star Times channel 274 on, or on Avo TV. Or you can just stream us live on YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching. I am Judith Atibi.